Hello, and welcome to Three Questions with my buddy Chuck Davison from Inspirity with us. Hey, Chuck, welcome to the show. Hey, Kev, thanks for having me. So let's start at the beginning. Tell us a little bit about what Inspirity does. Yeah, absolutely. So Inspirity, uh, first and foremost, we're, we're an HR service company. Uh, we were founded 35 years ago down in Kingwood, Texas, and today have 80 offices throughout the country. Uh, our founder, who's still our CEO today, his name's Paul Cervardi. Uh, he was a serial entrepreneur and he had a lot of small businesses that failed. And they failed because he was too focused uh, in the business to focus on the business. He was in the weeds. He was wearing a lot of different hats and, and it was just too overwhelming for him. So he got with uh, a couple of his partners and they said, there's got to be a better way to do this for small businesses. And they actually spearheaded the PEO industry, the professional employer organization. Uh, they were really the first ones to come up with that concept. Uh, there are a few other players in the game today uh, that operate in the industry, but we were the first. Uh, and really what's nice about it today is, you know, our mission statement is to help small businesses succeed so that the communities around them prosper. And we're able to do that by having a local presence in the community and really getting to know these businesses on more of a, a deeper level than just a transactional level. But we have the support behind us of a $4 billion company that's traded on the New York Stock Exchange. Um, so really, we're, we're really trying to help the small businesses in the areas of HR. Uh, a lot of small businesses either don't have the time, don't have the resources to understand what's there at their disposal. Uh, and those are, you know, areas that we try to help them in, whether it's improving what they're currently doing or coming in and providing kind of instant infrastructure. Uh, what's nice is we're not cookie cutter and, and we really go about our business trying to learn where the business is at and, and help them to get to where they want to go. Makes sense. So I want to start with em employee benefits. You know, in my job as CFO at the bank, you know, you look at something like healthcare, and it was just such a challenge to try to understand, you know, the pros and cons of each policy, who's on my team, what challenges they're facing, you know, where, hey, you know, okay, this is great because, you know, for a single person, it's beautiful, but for a family, you know, the fees are so high, it's putting a burden on those people. So can you help the companies kind of look at who their employees are, how they're using the benefits and what may be the best match for them? Yes, but not exactly how you just phrased it. So what we, what we really pride ourselves on is providing flexibility through choice when it comes to the benefit piece, uh, because you're absolutely right. You know, a single 23 year old has different medical needs than a 35 year old with three kids at home. So understanding that, you know, not every plan is right for every person. We really pride ourselves on providing flexibility through choice. Um, all of the plans we offer, there's a minimum that it ranges from five to nine different options for employees to choose from. So they can either, so they can find the right coverage for them and what fits them, you know, where they are today. Uh, the other piece of it too, with our model being a PEO, uh, it's a co-employment model. So we, sh when clients come on board in the PEO relationship, we share in a lot of risk and, and there's co-employment. What that allows us to do, Kevin, is we can go to uh, our national carriers, United Health. Uh, in Massachusetts, we use TOF. In California, there's some more local presence. And the reason we do that is because in Mass, the, the TOF's presence is just, you know, we found it to just be the best there. So what we're able to do is if you had a 10-person a company and you went to TOF's, you said, hey, I'd like pricing on my medical benefits. They're going to go, okay, Kevin, you get 10 lives. Here you go. In the co-employment model, we would take your 10 employees and put them into a pool with all of Insperity's employees and all of the employees of all of our clients under one federal tax ID number. What that allows us to do is then go to Tufts or United and say, hey, we have 400,000 lives. And just like anything else, you know, purchasing power, if you, if you buy a bottle of water out of a vending machine, you pay a dollar, you're getting a dollar per bottle. But if you go to Costco and you buy a 20 pack for five, now it's, you know, 20 cents per bottle or 25 cents per bottle. So we're able to use our economies of scale to, to generate right off the top, much better pricing. And then we take that pricing for four, 400,000 lives, Kevin, and we say, here, this is the pricing for your 10 employees, for your organization. The other thing that we're able to do, because we really look to help businesses mitigate the risk is we won't just take anybody on board, unfortunately, as much as we'd like to. We do have a responsibility to protect our existing clients. 
So we go through an evaluation process, assess the risk of your company. And, and you know, if you're a dynamite manufacturer, we're probably not going to bring you on into the pool. Um, but with the low risk that we do have, year over year increases in medical keep going up. You know, they can be anywhere from eight to 15%. Over the last 10 years, on average, we've actually kept our client increases at three and a quarter percent over the last 10 years. Now, again, that's an average, right? Some are going to be lower, some are going to be higher, but just kind of national average, I think is a right around 10%, give or take. Uh, so, so it offers not only off the top, the flexibility for employees to get the right plan that fits them, but it also uh, is going to be a cost reduction in, in you know, just the, the cost of the premiums for the employers. And it's also going to help them budget year over year to know like, hey, we're not going to have this dramatic increase next year because we had a few high claims. So the year over year ultimately is really what uh, a lot of the, our clients find attractive. So let's switch over. Let's talk a little bit about HR because HR is just such a hot topic. As you mentioned earlier, there's just a lot of companies that, you know, don't have the experience level. You know, often I, I joke, you know, it's often given to somebody who works there. Hey, you know, you have this job. You're also in charge of HR. Mm -hmm. and that can be really scary to me because if you don't understand, you know, what the rules and procedures are, you know, as we especially using, you know, as we come back to the office, you know, you got to know what, what you can and can't do. That's why it really just makes sense to outsource this, right? Just take that responsibility off the plate. Yeah. I mean, unless, unless you have somebody with a true HR background, I, I would absolutely agree. Uh, funny enough, my wife is, uh, was a former executive director for a nonprofit. And what you just described was her life. It was like, hey, you're the executive director, but you're also doing HR. And she has no background in that. So there were days, you know, where she would come home really stressed out. We had an incident at work and I'm reading page after page, three days of lost productivity to make sure they were in compliance for something. So absolutely, you know, unless they have an HR background and a lot of the small businesses find themselves in a position where, you know, it's always sales or finance and marketing. HR is always the last, the last piece to get uh, addressed. So by, by outsourcing it and, and really partnering with us, you know, we act as an extension of the organization. Uh, not only, you know, do we have SHRM certified experts, you know, there's very few employees at Insperity that are in my role. In the 80 offices, there's about 400 employees that are, that are in a similar role as me. And the other, you know, a couple hundred thousand are all HR professionals. And so the way it works, Kevin, is, you know, when somebody decides they want to work with us, uh, you know, we really understand their business, what they're trying to accomplish. They get a team of dedicated experts. So it's not a call center. It's not, oh, you had an issue with this. And then the next time the issue comes up, it's, oh, hi, I'm Chuck. Let me go read Kevin's notes. And you have to read you know, have that same conversation again, you know, this is a dedicated team that's going to start understanding the ins and outs of your business uh, and, and really just act as an extension of your organization. I think what COVID has shown us too is, you know, the geographical bounds of, of hiring the best people for your organization. They're going to start to go if the business allows for it, right? You know, if, if you're a sales organization and there's, a, there's somebody, you're in Rhode Island, or Massachusetts, but there's somebody in Oregon that's just a great fit for you, but I can't hire. Well, now people are understanding, hey, I can hire these remote workers. The challenges that brings is Rhode Island and Massachusetts and Oregon, they all have different tax codes. They all have different labor laws. And if you're unfamiliar with that, that's a lot of time you have to dedicate to updating yourself on the Oregon labor laws. So we have teams that are very proactive behind the scenes working on that for these small businesses. So they can focus on their own team, their own people, their own culture, their own growth. And we really just kind of give them the peace of mind of everything on the back end is in compliance and as it should be. I really like that, Chuck, because I've been in jobs where something will happen and the first thing is, well, what does the policy say? We don't have one. Mm -hmm. And that's a real issue because, you know, if you didn't make, make it clear to the employees what's expected to try to penalize them for it, well, like you said, just as things constantly change and you're looking at saying, yeah, but your policies, it, it does, it's not the law in the state of Massachusetts anymore. So it really does make sense. And as we were joking before the show, often when we start a business, we bring in all our friends and family. Yep. And, you know, good, bad, or indifferent. You know, we talked about that. It's probably not great. But, you yep. know, you're my brother. I can treat you in a certain way because you're my brother. 
you know, but if I have an employee and I do that to the employee, well, it may end differently. So it's really important to have those policies and procedures in place and make sure they fit your organization. So Chuck, what's the best way for someone to reach out to you? How do they learn more if they're facing these issues? Yeah, great question, Kevin. So, you know, again, I've talked about how everything we do is to support the small business and the community. And, and what I love about this company is I've worked for sales organizations where it's that boiler room approach, right? I'm going to hammer you, hammer you, hammer you, make you feel guilty. That's not this role at all. It's, it's, hey, let me casual first conversations. Let me understand about your business, your organization. Let me understand about what you're doing, what you're trying to do. And if we have a solution that fits for you, that's great. And, and that's always the goal. If not, and I can point you in the right direction, that's, that's fine too. Uh, so the best way for me, you know, I, I'm on LinkedIn a lot, um, you know, on the, on the website. Uh, I think you guys put the phone number and email too, but I, I'm open lines of communication. Anytime, some, even if it's just questions about, hey, where do I go? You know, is this something you guys do? I'm happy to talk with anybody. Uh, I approach everything from a, a certain leadership mindset. Um, so our, our website is just insperity.com. We have great resources there. Uh, there's a lot of uh, great blog posts that our Sherm certified experts are constantly updating and putting out there as well. I would, I would encourage folks to check out if they're just trying to understand or if they have a question about a certain topic. Uh, but yeah, LinkedIn, email, phone, I'm, I'm available pretty much all day, every day. So just, um, just give us your, your email and phone number so they'll have it on the recording. Absolutely. So my email is charles.davidson, just like the motorcycle, and that's at insperity.com. And the best phone number is 401-396-1055. Uh, that is my office number, but I have it set up to ring to my cell phone too. So if I'm not near my desk, it'll find me. Hey, Chuck, really appreciate you taking a few minutes to call on the show. And as always, thanks for being my friend. I appreciate it, Kevin. Thank you.